So now in the previous video, we've learned how to ask a user a particular question and use that information that they give us stored into a variable. Well, actually, we haven't learned how to use it yet. We've learned how to store that information into a variable. Right? Again, I really encourage you to pair an ask with a set so that when you ask, what is your name? Here we go. What's my name? Ben. It stores Ben in that variable, which I've named name. Now, the thing is, I actually want my story now to continue not with Mary had a little lamb, but with Ben had a little lamb. Right? The main idea here is what I'd really like to do, oops, it's under variables, is I'd like to be able to take this name information. We know that name says so right here, name currently is the value Ben. We'd like to have that and say right here, you know, Ben had a little lamb. The problem is that if I, if I let go of this variable block right here, Okay, see where I'm at? If I let go of this right now, it doesn't go over the word Mary, it just replaces everything. It fills in the hole, right? Round peg, round hole. And so that's not what we want because right now what I get if I run this is that instead of saying Ben had a little lamb or James had a little lamb, let me type in James when it comes up here. Instead of saying James had a little lamb, it simply says James for three seconds and then says its fleece was white as snow, right? Well, we don't want that. We want it instead to add that into the story. Well, there's a couple ways that we could do this. One is the really cheap way of doing this, oops, is to actually make it do something like this. So it could say James for three seconds and then say has a little lamb. But that feels kind of mechanical, right? The idea of James has a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that, and then we don't want the word, you know, Mary or James or Ben up on the on its screen alone. We want this just the way it was before. We want it to say, Mary had a little lamb, right? And so we want to instead be able to kind of put this together. And we can do this with something that's here from the operators menu. So again, a menu we haven't really looked at yet. I'm going to go to the operators menu and I'm going to come down here toward the bottom and there's this block that's called the join block. And what the join block does is it takes two pieces of information assumed to be text and it joins them together, um, one right after the other. The proper term for this in computer science is concatenate, right? It concatenates the first word with the second word, puts them right next to each other. Um, so right now what you see here is apple, banana, and if I, if I click on this block, you see it'll tell you I'm going to produce apple, banana. Well, what I want to produce is James has a little lamb, and so I'm going to take the, the name block and I'm going to drop it in the first hole, and so now I get James and banana. And now I want to add in the had a little lamb. Right? And so what I'm going to get instead of Mary had a little lamb, James had a little lamb, Ben had a little lamb, Amy had a little lamb, right? Depending on what I put in there for the name, I'm going to produce that. Almost. You'll notice if you look very carefully there, it says James had, right? It's one word. This doesn't uh, add spaces. It doesn't necessarily assume that you really have words and so it does not put a space there. If you want a space, which of course we do, between James and had, what you actually have to do is come right here into had a little lamb and add an extra space at the start of this. So again, look, it's hard to see, but what this says is join name with space had a little lamb. And now I get James had a little lamb. That might be a little bit confusing at first because when you look at this apple banana example, when I click on it, it says apple space banana. What you can't really see that Scratch does is there's actually a space right here, and I'm not sure that the video will show this. So look at this. Notice that this first thing is actually six characters, A-P-P-L-E space, and that's why you get apple banana with a space in. And that's something that uh, you and your students will all have to adjust to. You always have to put an extra space. But the idea now is that I can put this join block in here, and so I can say, say, the joining of name which at the moment is James, had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And now I want to say, and everywhere that James went. And so you look at this and you say, well, wait a minute. 
I can only join two things together. But what I want to join is the and everywhere that space, right? I'm going to add a space at the end there. And everywhere that space, and now we're going to grab name and put that in here. But, but I want to include went on the end. And you say, well, how do I do that? It doesn't have room for it. It turns out we can do that by using a pair of joins. You actually can add this join into the first hole, right? And so you can put multiple joins together. So it can say, and everywhere that James banana, well, no, we don't want banana. We want everywhere that James space went, right? And again, I'm going to click on this now. And you see that produces and everywhere that James went, which is exactly what we want, and everywhere that Mary went, right? And you can produce that. By the way, just a quick side note before I actually show you this. Um, it really doesn't matter what order you put these joins in. It doesn't matter. I mean, I in the one up above, it's join, join. This one says join Apple with join, join. It really, truly does not matter. What it's simply going to do is if you need multiples of these things, if you need to mix and match a whole bunch of variables and text, you can just push them all inside of each other and just know that it's going to read exactly the way this reads, right? This is going to read apple, banana, banana, apple, banana, banana, because of the way I have it at the moment, right? There's some spacing issues because the space was after the apple, um, but it absolutely works. And so this allows me to now say, run my story here. I have to wait for it to catch up to Mary had a little lamb. Let's make it special for you. Ben had a little lamb, so I'm going to run that. Okay, hit return. I hope you like it. Ben had a little lamb. Perfect. Hi, I'm the lamb, right? Its fleece was white as snow. This is where all that QC stuff gets in the trouble when you're, I'm showing a video and we have to wait for it to play. No problem. And everywhere that Ben went, the lamb was sure to go. And then evidently I call out Lammy Pie. And the lamb comes over coming. Oh, see, we missed something. I do love that Mary. So I not only have to add that name in the join to Mary, to, or sorry, to Mother Goose, but I need to add it to the lamb. And so when I come down here and we say I do love that Mary, I want to say... I do love that space, right? And then I'm going to come over to this one, and I want to add in my name block. And we can put this in here. And because I want to clean this up, now that we've sort of seen how this works, I'm going to turn off these check marks. I don't want to display name, so I'll turn that off. And I'll come back to sensing, and I don't need to see the answer anymore. Now we go back to our original story, and we have the full ability to see The story. So let's add this one more time. Let's do uh, Margaret. So we get Margaret had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Margaret went, the lamb was sure to go. the end. All right. Well, now we've introduced the idea of variables. We've introduced the idea of the join block. In the next videos, we're, videos, we're going to add some additional uh, couple of blocks to allow us to customize this story even more and really change not only what gets said, but how the program actually looks and works.